Hi, I'm Andrew Noski. I just wanted to demonstrate an add-in, uh, rather a plugin I've just added to iMod. It's called Name Wizard. It might not be part of the standard iMod release for a while, probably mid-2011 uh, to late 2011. You can still get it um, in the alpha copy. Now, the thing you'll notice with this um, plugin straight away is it shows you all your object names, but it also matches them to tell you if they're proper or not. So for example, microtubule has been matched with a database entry. If we click match here, what it'll actually do is bring up its entry in uh, Neuralex. So all these entries tie in with the Neuralex database, which is a database hosted uh, by the Cell Center Database, uh, the National Center for Microscopy and Imaging Research at uh, UCSD. So we can read about this particular organelle here. Most of that information is actually even available when we hold the mouse over this um, cell here. So the power of this is it lets us quickly change names. So here I'm just going to start typing and you can see an autocomplete. So I'm going to name this, let's see, let's name this the the arm membrane. Here I'll make another uh, centriole object and you see this thing's turned green. So interactively it's going to show us what matches to proper names. Um, you'll notice however this is a lighter shade of green. This actually represents a non-match of color. So by clicking match colors it's going to instantly match these colors to something that we have in our table. Now you're probably asking now where are these entries stored? And the answer to that is uh, in a special CSV, comma separated value file. So I'm going to open this now, actually. I'll just click on this link. Uh, it's going to open. Uh, what you can see here, opened in Excel, these are the different fields we've got. Name, then the color, red, green, blue component. So that's the preferred color for your particular group. You can enter in there. The hyperlink links to the Neuralex database by default, as I mentioned. Unique ID is the unique ID for the organelle. So that's really important um, because often certain types of organelles may be given different names. Even though it's the same organelle, it might be given different names, and those names can change over time. This will stay consistent, however. Uh, description, you can enter in your own description here, which may help your students actually name these things. Um, super category is an interesting one, a useful one. It basically is the next step up. So if this was a vesicle, or sorry, this was a transport vesicle, that would be a type of vesicle, uh, would be its super category, and the super category of vesicle would be membrane bound organelle and so forth. And you can even, even type in synonyms here. So feel free to jump in, open this file, and change these. Um, color values, you can even add your own. Um, one you'll use quite often, I believe, a lot of people working on mitochondrial membrane outer. And you'll notice that that, it's actually out, outer membrane, is um, super category is mitochondrial membrane and, uh, and so forth. So yeah, feel free to open this and add your own. I'm just going to hide it now. Um, by default, it's in this location. Let's just bring up the help menu. Here you can read uh, a lot more about the plugin. It tries to load from this location here, which is called the iMod uh, Calibder. So the advantage of that is it's actually going to persist. So even if I update iMod, that CSV file will stay there. It won't get overwritten. Uh, if that doesn't exist, though, it's going to fall back to the iMod plugin der which uh, I believe is on a Mac under Applications and iMod, Windows will be under the SIGWIN directory and so forth. So feel free to read that. It, it's got lots of information even. It's got a link and explains the importance of naming objects in iMod, why it's so important to get it consistent, and some of the conventions that have been used. For example, if you're got something that's a little more abstract or a non-standard name object, I suggest using capital letters. Um, so yeah, that's what it's loading from. You'll notice here in my little convention, anything after this full stop is, is sort of like a comment. So I can actually, if I type in anything here, I can easily break it, but if I put in a full stop, then I can add a comment. Uh, 
and that can be quite useful. Now, the real advantage of this, of course, is if you get your whole group using this um, same CSV file and install it, you can actually tell everyone in the group, hey, before you submit this model for analysis, make sure that it passes the name wizard test and it's green, and that way it'll be consistent with your database and so forth. Uh, there's a lot of other features in this plugin. For example, I can do various things, batch rename, which you can't see down here. Um, can here I'm just going to merge these particular objects together. So that's you know quite a neat way to organize all your object names. Um, you can change color manually very quickly as well. However, for the, for the most part, I suggest that you just try to match names to the database. So that was just a quick overview. Uh, I hope this has convinced you to try to install NameWizard if you're really passionate like I am about getting everyone in your group to actually label things consistently because it's a terrible problem when students don't label things and uh, a few months later when that student has left, no one knows what they're looking at and uh, the colors might be all over the shop. Uh, just one more thing to point out, in addition to this hyperlink, it actually presents the unique ID here, which I was talking about. Uh, that's very important. Uh, it's machine readable. You can actually change to view information about the contours. Um, well, I think that's everything I wanted to cover. Uh, thank you very much for listening, and I hope you install this plugin um, and get everyone in your group labeling and coloring things consistently. All right, thank you very much.